It's a deer. Chicken and the roosters and the food over there. birds and cars, houses, all the noises. I think there's Lake Cunningham right there. That must be Lake Cunningham, right? Uh, must be. Carmelite affairs. Oh. You hear that dog? It's really loud. <laughs> The city of San Jose. Wow, that's an amazing view. Isn't it beautiful? It's so peaceful up here. side chapel and then we'll go into the monastery. Side Chapel of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Are either of you familiar with Carmelites or Our Lady of Mount Carmel? So, Carmel is that mountain in the Holy Land, just about 20 miles north or west of Nazareth, where Jesus grew up, of course. So, there were hermits who wound up on Mount Carmel um, in the tradition of Elijah. He was up on Mount Carmel praying for the rain to fall. So eventually, it was in the 13th century when the, the uh, hermits built a chapel there dedicated to Mary. And then they became known as the Brothers of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. It was the first order in the church totally dedicated to Mary, to Jesus, through Mary, through Mary's help. So that's why we're called Carmelites, because uh, of the Mount Carmel. So our full name, the Carmelites, is our, uh, the brothers or the Discalce brothers of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel. Um, so this is her, and you can see on the left there <coughs> is her scapular. Mm -hmm. So the brown scapular, mm -hmm. that comes from this. Oh, um, from the color of oh, wow. Yeah, I, think yeah. I have a little one on. You have one? Um, you know the, oops, familiar with that? Yeah. yeah. The, 
this, see how it's front and back? It comes from this, which is front and back. It's the big apron. So that's the little version people wanted to share in that devotion to Mary and her being clothed with her, being her children, um, and sharing in her promise because she appeared to our friars in 1251 AD um, when we were going through a hard time. And she said, whoever dies clothed in this scapular will not suffer the fires of hell. Yeah. And that meant that we persevered to the end in our vows rooted in our baptism, and that she would always keep us in Jesus and his salvation. She would help us. And over time, people wanted to share in that promise of Mary, so they would persevere being clothed with her, like, you know, on Mary's, and in their devotion to her, and sharing in that scapular promise. So that's where that comes from. That's why she's holding that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. times a day um, to pray in choir okay. um, at the divine office, praying the psalms, sometimes singing the psalms, but what Carmelites are especially known for in the church is the spiritual life, helping other people develop their spiritual life, their relationship with our Lord and Our Lady. And so we spend an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening in silent prayer as well just to have like those little holy hours of intimacy with the Lord and then to help others according to their state in life um, to develop that kind of uh, intimacy with the Lord too. So. This is the sacristy. <laughs> very first Mass in California was celebrated by our friars in 1602. Um, and it was called the Vizcaino Expedition. The Spaniards came over with the ships and were charting along the coast. One of the friars was a cartographer, so drawing the maps. Um, and this was celebrated in San Diego, so they named it San Diego, the, the city in Southern California. The Alcala, so it was a saint, and then they would name, um, I think it was according to the saint of the day or the saints that they liked, like Santa Barbara. They went over to the island, you know, um, Catalina Island. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Santa Catalina, St. Catherine. And there's still a parish there for St. Catherine. Um, and they went all the way up, I think about to Carmel, California. So that's Carmelite, Mount Carmel. <laughs> um, they didn't name that. I think it's named afterwards, exactly. Yeah. So when St. Junipero Serra came with the Franciscans 150 years later, he used their map and he celebrated a mass under an oak tree or a big tree that they celebrated um, 150 years before. Um, so there's kind of a neat connection, yeah. Carmelites and Franciscans. We took off all the prayer things, but sometimes this is covered <clears throat> with um, um, prayer petitions from people who call in mm -hmm. from different parts of the country. Um, so feel free to. So, yeah. like when we need a prayer, we just come here and put something on there. <laughs> oh, sure, you can. Yeah. If people give them to us, we'll write them down and put them in for this week. Oh, I think they. That's very nice. Um, I think for Easter they took them all off. <laughs> <coughs> Upstairs is a cloister, so we have what we call cells mm -hmm. up there. It's, it's kind of like a little hermitage, I'd say. It's very simple. There's a, the room with the sink, um, a very simple bed, maybe a place to pray, a desk. Um, and it's called cell, not exactly jail cell, <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, in, in Latin, heaven is celum, C-E-L-L, -L, celum, 
Um, so it's like a little heaven. It's very simple, but God meant to fill that wow. for us. So up here, so the ladies here aren't, aren't allowed to go upstairs where we are. And the back is the private cloister area for the friars. But on Sundays, because we have overflow of parking, people drive around back. Oh. Park on that. We have a basketball court back there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we, so. we lost it. We went we, there. We went, oh. the, the door said, use the other door, but we didn't know we went all the way the, around that uh, there's another door behind there. We were looking for the other door. <laughs> okay. Just the venial sin. It's very bad. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple icons we need. That's from 1750. Our Lady Mount Carmel from Mexico. Mm. Uh, and because of the war... Russia and Ukraine right now. This one's from Russia. Yeah. Of Our Lady. That's something we just brought out to. Yeah. Have to pray with. That's pretty old too. Are you all familiar with relics? Relics? No. Not so much. So here's a relic. This was my grandpa's. <laughs> so my grandpa passed away. Um, it's about 10 years ago now, mm -hmm. but um, he always had hankies that he blows oh, yeah. nose. <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was the grossest thing. But after he died, I said, yeah, Grandma, I'd like one of Grandpa's hankies to remember him. And, oh. you know. Hankies, I know, but it's relics, as you told Well, it. it's a relic because it was some, from somebody who died. Oh. And it's, um, it's a remembrance of them, oh, just like okay. a picture could be. Oh, yes. But then we have a tradition in the church of relics of the saints. Uh -huh. um, but the first class relics are of their bodies in anticipation that they will be raised, you know, um, when the Lord comes again, even with their bodies will be glorified like Jesus's body on his resurrection. Uh -huh. So these are all Carmelite saints. Uh, you might be familiar, like St. Therese of Lisieux, the little uh -huh. flower, um, Santa Teresita. Uh -huh. She's there, and most of these are a piece of their of their bodies, actually, a remembrance there, or or clothing. She was a martyr in Auschwitz in World War II. Oh. She was a Jewish convert and a brilliant woman, Edith Stein, Saint Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, a cruce. She inspired Pope John Paul II. Oh. So he was a philosopher. And she was a philosopher oh. who's PhD, amazing. But eventually she became Christian. She read the biography of Saint Teresa of Jesus, or Saint Teresa of Avila, who founded us. And I'll show you some images of her. Um, she has an uh, autobiography called The Life. Um, mm -hmm. And one night, and she was searching for truth as a philosopher, she stumbled upon the book, she read it through the night, and Teresa had all sorts of mystical experiences with God, but was also just um, so advanced in her relationship with, with him and um, just amazing woman. And after she finished reading that book, she said, this is truth. <laughs> and she became uh, Catholic, was baptized. And eventually, after touring Europe, you know, speaking especially to women, this is in the 1930s or so, um, she discerned a call into the cloister, into the Carmelite nuns, and mm -hmm. uh, became a nun. Eventually, was captured by the Nazis because of her Jewish background. Mm -hmm. She had been yeah, Jewish yeah, yeah. but atheist, um, and was <coughs> martyred at Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Pope John Paul II canonized her eventually, but all sorts of Carmelite saints, and then mm -hmm. um, our other friends. Like Blessed Miguel Pro. Mm -hmm. Are you of a Mexican background? Yes, I am. Okay. Which which uh, state? Jalisco. Oh, Jalisco. Yeah. Okay. I, I lived there a couple months, just really? learning in Guadalajara, just working on Spanish. I live like two hours from Puerto Vallarta. Oh, okay. Which is a uh, some coast. Yeah. Where, yeah. Oh, nice. Have you heard of Blessed Miguel Pro? Yeah, I have heard yeah. a little bit, but. Yeah. You know, I have a friend who is um, studying all of this, and sh sometimes she um, oh, used she to share with me oh, okay. because I don't know she transmits 
peace when she talks mm. and you can see the passion that she has and the respect that she oh, has from yeah. all of the our uh, Catholic Church. Oh yeah. And she has told me but I don't remember. Mm -hmm. That's a piece of his, this sh is his shirt. Right? But he um, he went to some training in uh, Santa Clara, I think, or Palo Alto, where the okay. Jesuits have a house there. And then he went back to Mexico eventually, you know, during the persecutions by the government mm -hmm. of the Catholics. You know, many, many killed, and you've heard of the, uh, what were they called in the 1930s? The Cristeros? Sí, los Cristeros. Yeah. yeah. I think Jalisco is especially strong, mm -hmm. you know, as Catholics rising up, because the government... We have many churches, many cathedrals, and big uh, traditions oh, over yeah. there. <laughs> like, oh, when really? it's, um, we have a church that is Talpa, Talpa de Allende. Mm -hmm. Many people go there, it's close by Guadalajara, I think. Oh, okay. And many people go walking from different uh, towns, little towns. Mm -hmm. They just go walking, mm -hmm. even though they spend like two days walking oh. to get to the place. And they, like, when they promise something, mm -hmm. they ask for a favor and they get a favor um, back. So they do this, mm -hmm. like they sacrifice to pay yeah, the favor. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. Like intensify their prayer. Yeah. yeah. They, he, um, it was in Mexico City, um, he had been sneaking around mm -hmm. because mass, the government banned Holy Mass. <laughs> it, it was a criminal act to celebrate mass because they wanted to establish communist, I think, it's my understanding, a socialist you know, state and religion was just uh, garbage. And um, he would sneak around dressing up as like a car mechanic, or a street sweeper, or even a policeman. Oh. And he would go around either to bring sacraments, or food, or things to people uh, as a priest. Um, and he's risking his life doing it. And eventually, he was captured and framed. The president's car had been bombed, President wow. Gallas, and they said that he did it. He had no trial, he did not do that. Um, when he went to his to be marked to be killed mm -hmm. by the, um, the the government soldiers. Um, the president wanted him wanted it to be f uh, photographed, so they could show the people what cowards their priests were. But he went up, and there's photos of this. Blessed Miguel Pro, um, where he went before them. There's the firing squad, uh -huh. and he wouldn't turn his back to them. He refused the blindfold. And he had knelt down and he prayed for those who were about to kill him. Oh and then he stood up and he held out his arms in the form of a cross. And there's photos of this. And he cried out, Viva Cristo Rey! You know? And then they, they shot him. And in defiance of the government in Mexico City, the people carried his body um, in the coffin through the streets of Mexico City. Tens of thousands of people Okay, because they couldn't gather the government, but they <laughs> defied the government. So he was a really uh, big inspiration for the people. And you know that saying, Viva Cristo. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know that. Yeah. So there's, you know, of course, stories behind all of these. And yeah, just those connections with those. You've gone before us. There's parlors where we meet with people, spiritual direction, or to, to pray, talk to them. Oh. <laughs> um, just to show you, the, it started with the Carmelites, the devotion to um, Nino, Jesus. Uh -huh. Nino Jesus. Yeah, because uh, St. Teresa of Avila, um, she had a great devotion to Jesus as a child. So we'd continue that, the infant mm. of Prague. Yeah. So it got so approachable as a kid. The other relics, um, I mentioned that mass that was celebrated in Carmel, 1602. That says, um, it's a branch from the tree of the first mass. This is first celebrated oh, by the Carmelites. Wow. So that was from... By the sea. Yeah, in Carmel. And just all sorts of different relics, remembrances. 
oyster area. And in the back of through here, you can kind of peek through. This is um, we process in the back from prayer into the refectory, uh -huh. where we have our meals oh. through the, the side door. Um, there's a recreation room, and then even like a little barber shop. Yeah, some of us do our own hair. <laughs> <laughs> the, the main entrance uh, here. Just a couple of things. Um, we have a friend at a, a parish church that we run in Los Angeles area, Alhambra. She was in her 20s when she painted this for us. Really? And just was so talented. Yes. So, this, this is Mount St. Joseph. Wow. Of course, uh, beautiful images. Christina. Yeah, that's her name. Uh -huh. Christina Yang. I think she's a pretty Chinese background. She's so talented. This was a painting, it's not the original, but of um, St. Teresa of Avila. Uh -huh. It's a, the España. And she is the we're the only order in the Church of Men founded by a woman. Oh. So there's other ones that are newer, like Mother Teresa of Calcutta, mm -hmm. you know, who founded, you know, with the, with the fathers of the missionaries of charity. But of the ancient orders, um, we're the only one. So she started this reform and pulled in St. John of the Cross, and they became, we call her our Holy Mother, John of the Cross, Holy Father, and then later on came St. Therese, who everybody knows, so you know, famous. But this was painted of her later in life by one of the friars, Fray Juan de la Miseria, that she was really beautiful, and later in life, you know, maybe not as, as much, but after he finished painting this of her, as she's, you know, having a pose, she had a sense of humor, and she said, Fray Juan, you, you painted me ugly and blurry-eyed. She said, so, so. she's the first woman doctor of the church. So, uh, you know, who's like a teacher. Uh, she had church. knowledge about medicine, plants, and. Uh, you know, not that kind of doctor, uh, but a, a doctor of prayer. Oh, I see. Oh. Exactly. So when we say a doctor, you know, somebody who's a doctor of mathematics. You or get doctor. like your PhD. Yeah, like they know their stuff. Yeah. So in the church, I think there's something like, is it in the upper 30s of doctors? But in 1970, I think it was, yeah, it was she was declared a doctor of the church of the doctor of prayer. Wow. So she especially teaches us how, like, how to reach the heights of Thanks. union with God mm -hmm. through prayer. She has lots of writings, mm -hmm. they're really great. And in Espanol. See? Sí. Okay, she's a. Wow. Uh, in, in Spain. Okay. Yeah. Si, si, si. Voy a buscar. I will oh. search. I would recommend. See, either her. It's called The Way of Perfection. The Way of Perfection. Or her life, um, Su Vida. Yeah. Oh, she wrote her life? Yeah. She was, she was um, told to by a spiritual director. He said, you need to write about your experiences with God. Oh. And so I said, okay. And so she wrote her autobiography, and then that became a great book. Mm -hmm. This is Matthew, yeah. who's a, he's a postulant. Yeah. He's he's a He's singing. He's singing. Oh, yes. Yeah. This Beautiful is voice. And tell me again. Cynthia. Cynthia. <laughs> friends. Yes. We met them at um, our low end with her family at St. Victor's Saint Victor. on Easter Sunday. Yeah. yeah. So this is your first time up here? Today. Yes. Yeah. Um, Father Mathis was very inviting. So we're like, <laughs> yeah. to come we and, took uh, the opportunity, right? Yeah. <laughs> good. Good. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. The joy. The, nice. You the man? The keys are yeah, on the rack. See you guys. So I do um, just working with vocations, men discerning, so they can see a bit of our life. We have this little table set up. Mm. 
But um, that's St. Teresa, St. Therese. She's a doctor of the church mm -hmm. now. And then John of the Cross, a doctor. So we have three in our order. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just different images of friars. We have a mission in Uganda, Africa. Oh. So our friars go to Africa to help um, grow the church there yeah. in our Carmelite order. This is the, the our friar who's in Uganda now, <laughs> Father Philip. Oh, he's there? Yeah. And then, you know, you've seen pictures of the Carmelite nuns? Mm -hmm. Those yeah. are some of the young nuns in Los Angeles who we go weekly to be their chaplains. Some of the pictures. These are the <laughs> nuns um, in um, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. I think it's Las Cruces. And they all, um, I think all of them Spanish speaking. Mm -hmm. And that's Father Robert you were talking about. Barcelos. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he was blessing their grounds. But, um, yeah. Some more pictures. St. Therese. Is that familiar? Oh, sure, up here. No problem if not. I'll just make, make a, an encouragement uh, to read, maybe before anything else, her autobiography. Okay. She was asked to write before she died at 24 years old. So young. Yeah, she had tuberculosis. Um, she is now declared a doctor of the church, especially because when she wrote out about her life and her relationship with God, um, Nobody knew her. You know, she died in France in 1897. And then her writings started getting circulated. And it's become the third most read book. Uh, I fall. <laughs> the third most read book uh, in um, Christianity, in the Catholic Church. So the Bible, number one, Imitation of Christ, number two. Her story of a soul. It's called the story of a soul. It's so good. It's touched so many of our lives. Um, at the beginning of it, it's very simple, talking about her childhood. But then things that she shares, insights about the spiritual life, about prayer, have inspired literally millions of people. I'm gonna write the names of the books. <laughs> oh yes, and I'd say put that number one. Story of a soul. So, so many people. Pope Francis, early in his papacy, he had a book he was taking on a plane with him. And they said, what book do you have, Pope Francis? He said, uh, I think it was Story of a Soul, <laughs> Therese. It's <laughs> great. Her as a child, sister, right before she entered Carmel, she entered at 15 years old. She went to the Pope to get permission, and he said, be obedient to your bishop, whatever he decides. But she put up her hair, so she looked older. <laughs> and she wasn't perfect. She had her issues. That's why people can relate to her so well. She was kind of neurotic at times, you know, OCD or, you know, scrupulous. Um, but she became just love. She just loved so well. And that's actually after her death, when she was laid out. Um, she looked so beautiful death. But right after she died, she lived this intense, hidden, holy life. Um, one of the nuns came up to her as she, her body was laid out, and the nun had a um, permanent disease she dealt with that couldn't be cured. And she went up and she laid her head on Therese's feet. <laughs> and right then, she was completely cured of her disease. God started working miracles through her life. She was appearing to soldiers, and was it World War I, and maybe World War II? Um, they would ask her her help for protection. They were seeing her you know, apparitions. Um, yeah, she was just incredible. So before she died, she promised to send a shower of roses to the earth. Mm. Um, meaning, she said, I will spend my heaven doing good. God will use me. 
And today when people will ask for intercession, usually they'll pray a novena, those nine days of prayer. Um, when her, their prayer is answered, they receive a rose mysteriously. It happens often uh, for people. It's happened to me before. Um, and she promised to you know, send a shower of roses, you know, of love, of doing good. But often it becomes actual roses <laughs> that people receive. So you just pray, or how does that work? You know, the Anyone? No, or a novena? novena, like oh, novena. Yeah, novena. Oh. Usually, you can just pray, of course. Why? But that's um, a novena prayer. You can Google St. Therese, T-H-E-R-E-S-E. -E. That's the French of Teresa. Mm -hmm. St. Therese of Lisieux, um, a novena. Mm -hmm. And then usually it'll say in the prayer, like, Send down a rose from heaven, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we can take a Your four daughters? Right? Yes. And they're all like <laughs> similar ages? Yeah, teens. Uh, teen, 20. Yeah, ten, uh, they're all like almost their teens. The youngest is 11, and then there's 13, and then one's going to be 15 next month, and then 17. Oh, okay. So there's like all these. Four daughters. <laughs> <laughs> Your sisters? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With her husband there, and so I just invited yeah. them. Father Paul is also in early formation, becoming a friar. Oh, so. We saw him at the mass. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. yeah. Sorry, uh... And today they're going to have a day out. So um, we're not monks who are cloistered strictly, you know, here. Mm -hmm. uh, we go out like St. Victor's, mm -hmm. but also go out to have fun to once a week. We each oh. have a day where oh. go to get some rest, some recreation, have some have some fun, uh, go to visit other churches sometimes. And that's what him and Matthew are doing now. Oh, nice. So, nice. Enjoy, Paul. Enjoy. <laughs> have a great day. Have a great day. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Our patron protector. Just a couple of computers that we have for. Oh. Um, they, they will use those for different things. Area. Uh, more cells, and there's a chapel for the Blessed Sacrament. Up there, you can see a beautiful And this is, um, we have a statue of St. Teresa of, of, of Avila. So, as a doctor, she's looking at the cross. So she's the one who founded us. And then Therese was named after her, you know, 300 plus years later. She was in the 1500s. I think we have that statue at um, Our Lady of Refuge. Oh, okay. That's the one I go, I'm like, oh, it looks yeah. like, looks, yeah, I think that's the statue because I'm always looking at that statue. I'm like, I, I don't know which one that is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Teresa. Yeah. I have to go look at her closer then because <laughs> we go to that church over there. As, uh, our Lady of Refuge. Oh, okay. yeah. Is that the, is it uh, Vietnamese? Yeah, uh, there's a uh, Hispanic and Vietnamese, so it's on Lucretia, oh, okay. my story room. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking of our, is there an Our Lady of Lavang? Uh, yeah, that one, uh, Our Lady of Lavang is uh, St. Patrick in downtown, but then there's different locations. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is your family Vietnamese? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. This is private, but we have a recreation area downstairs, a workout room, ping pong, <laughs> yeah, have some fun. Um, it's been a working, we've been working for Easter, so it's not all picked up right now, but oh, that was a crate that, um, this was donated to us, on this icon of St. Joseph, so we're going to find a place mm. for this icon, a priest, this priest actually wrote this icon. Our Lady of Guadalupe. <coughs> oh. Oh. So, that just came. Very beautiful, huge. Okay. 
and Loan have to show you this. Um, these are relics of Pope St. John Paul II. Yeah. Oh, good. In Mexico, they love him so much. Oh, yeah. So, wow. This is when he came to Carmel, California, Monterey. Yes, he told us about that during the... Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It was on this visit, I think that miracle happened mm. at that time. Or it must have been, because that's the only time he came. Yeah, he's listening during Mass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, in, the, in the mission in Carmel, I think the like pillows that they had there, they gave those to us <laughs> when he's praying. 1987, wow. and what he used that mass, the cruet, and the, um, the patin, oh, yes, yeah. in the picture. So once a year, when it's his feast day, we pull these out and we use them at the mass. Oh, oh wow. That, um, Just and, like that, like <coughs> and how, how does this end up here? Like, you know, it's so special to be here. Yeah, it's here. Um, oh. We had a, a friend at the mission um, of uh, San Barmeo, San Carlos mm -hmm. Barmeo, mm -hmm. in Carmel. Oh. And um, he was the, like, curator, I think you might call it, of the church, of making um, renovations. And he gave these to us. Oh, wow. So, very special. What were you gonna say? About the, the <coughs> imagine the image of that, uh, like I don't know. Maybe it looks like the Virgen de Talpa in our mm. town, mm. but it looks like I'm not pretty sure because all the Marys they look similar mm. when they put mm. it like in a tower. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does he have a little Jesus? Mm -hmm. The baby so. Jesus? Yeah. Yeah, he does. Look like he has the baby Jesus, Niño Jesus. I think that's at the mission and, uh, in Carmel. But I don't know if you shared, Loanne, the story from the Mass oh, no, with, with Cynthia? Yeah. No, not yet. Okay. You don't have to, you can record it if you like to, yeah. but I'll share with you kind of quick. It's pretty wild. Yeah, so close to home. So at this. Um, visit of Pope St. John Paul II, 1987. The nuns who are in the cloister in Carmel, mm -hmm. um, they left the cloister to go visit him, to try to see him. Okay. And um, I didn't share this part, but he was in a tent, like after mass, and they were outside of the tent, you know, all the you know, priests or others were with John Paul II, and they were kind of waiting outside, you know. Oh. And all these nuns, you know, in their habit, and a priest came over and said, what are you doing out here? And they said, well, we're waiting. We hope to see Pope John Paul II. He said, come in. And so all the nuns went in. We have a picture of them surrounding him and just kind of like, oh, Holy Father, you know, so talking excited. to him. During that conversation, he said, is this your whole community? And they said, well, there's one sister who's back at the monastery, which was only like 10 minute drive away. But she was ill and there's a nurse taking care of her. Uh -huh. um, they said, yeah, she couldn't make it. And I don't know what happened exactly, but maybe it was when he gave them a blessing. Oh. When they got back, that nun who was sick, she said, John Paul II visited me here. Oh my and they God. said, what? What are you talking about? He said, yeah, he came and he blessed me. And the nurse saw a man in the white cassock as, as well Sweet. present there. And uh, it was at the moment that he had blessed the Day. nuns in the yeah, tent. Uh -huh. So God had bilocated him uh -huh. two places at one time, which has happened in the church with saints, you know. So he was really, uh, he was a mystic. He was so deep in prayer. Um, That's probably. Yeah, not many people know about that experience wow. that the nuns had. So this library and Bessie. Carmelite books in the back. It's so peaceful to be here. Oh. <laughs> it's uh, short but sweet, a little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Do you need the, the restroom? No, we're done. Okay. Okay. Secular Carmelites too, who they're uh, married people, single people, old, young, who have a sense of calling from God to become a Carmelite, um, mm -hmm. but not as a friar or as a nun or a sister, and um, they're laity. Mm. And they'll well, they they will wear <clears throat> a larger scapular um, when they have gatherings, and they we have two thousand. In our province, which is the West Coast, um, Hawaii, and Alaska, that's our territory, <clears throat> that we um, form, that we minister to, and they're amazing. They meet once a month, different places around the Rocky Mountains West um, for formation, to be together in community, to read these mm -hmm. books I speak about, um, to pray together. And there's many who are here that were probably at mass today as well, but who, who come up. Um, and one of the communities meets here once a month in the library, one of the friars. Um, we'll give them a talk, celebrate mass for them, and then they break up into their formation groups. Oh. So they will start out, you know, just aspirant, and then they'll be clothed in the scapular, and then they, they'll go on to make promises, if God's calling them to that. Yeah. So um, that's a really beautiful thing. And people really, really grow and they're very inspirational. And there's communities around the Bay Area too, other ones. But, and some of them, not all of them are secular Carmelites, but who come up and they'll just spend a day here, you know, working in the flower <coughs> beds or, you know, <laughs> praying yeah, or... We saw how beautiful they have the carving. Oh yeah, so sweet. Great. But you've seen the outside. Mm -hmm. We're good. That's the little tour. Okay, thank you <laughs> so much. It was course, very peaceful and it's nice to know about this place. Been sure. here forever and didn't even know it existed. Oh, yeah. oh sure. Yeah. If you look behind you at some. Um, oh. If you see at the. Below that little bell tower, um, mm -hmm. the wooden Mary with Jesus, the sure. image. Can you see that? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. oh, this is down yeah, it's in the middle. I don't know the story behind it, but they are Asian in that image. Mm. Um, we're a little closer. Well, and I think at the time, I mean, it was mostly Latino, you know, when we started here. Not as many Asians. Oh, yeah. But it's kind of fascinating over time, more and more. So. Asians and Latinos, of course, but <laughs> the Filipinos, Vietnamese, especially. Mm -hmm. But there's a couple from Hong Kong, you know, who come up. It's just interesting that <laughs> that was made in probably decades ago, okay. and then the Lord was sending us many beautiful uh, Asian people. To come. And Saint Therese is very popular amongst the Vietnamese, especially because she was going to go to Vietnam hey. as, uh, to establish the Carmelite sisters there or to help a, a Carmel that was already there. We call our individual houses Carmels, <laughs> like Mount Carmel in the Holy Land. So it's like a, a replication of that around the world, a place up a mountain close, um, seeking the Lord and in intimacy with Him. Maybe that's why we have her statue at our church. <laughs> you know, and it's probably <laughs> Therese. Another one you saw was Teresa. Uh -huh. That was big Teresa. She's uh -huh. the one who founded us. And then Therese, who is the one in the photographs from the 1800s. Oh, yes. She's the one who's going to go to Vietnam, but she died oh, before it okay. happened. And through that, the Vietnamese, many people have been so devoted to her. She, oh. The little flower she's called. Or, and so there's just a neat connection with um, yeah. um, Asian people too. Do you have any Mass in Spanish here? Uh, no, nothing regular. There has been some Spanish ministry in mm. the past. 
um, like they're giving a talk, a friar, and they might have had a day of recollection, like okay. a little retreat. But no, not some um, consistent. Not okay. But we do have some friars who speak Spanish. Um, our prior, Father Tomas, he's amazing at Spanish. And he's not Hispanic. No. <laughs> you learned it. Wow. And he speaks. Um, you learned something when you were in Mexico living? Sí, pero mi español es. <laughs> ah, sí, sí, pero. Living in Guadalajara. Um, um, ¿Cómo se dice? Oh, cerca de. Cerca de sí. Iteso. La. Universidad Jesuita? No, no sé. Ok, es en el sur de uh, Guadalajara, pero... Um, pero sí aprendió español. Sí. Look at that, you learned Spanish. Pero, yeah. Es, um, especialmente la, la gente mexicana es cerca de mi corazón. Uh, mm. También mis uh, amigos. Before I became a Carmelite, I was in a relationship with a woman from uh, Michoacan. Oh my. <laughs> who has, who's one of 12 children. <laughs> Big family, the Mendez family. Like the it's, apostles. Yeah. Pedro Santiago. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I was always the gringo oh, at, at okay. the family celebrations and the dances and these things. <laughs> so I got to know them well. And, um, and then God called me to become a priest in the middle of that. Wow. Yeah, so we offered our relationship back to him and he became a Carmelite, mm. but they're still close to me. Who is him? This oh, is here. Bella. Bella. Ella. 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 just came over here. Oh, hi. Is, <laughs> she's very gentle. <laughs> Thank you, Heavenly Father, for Loanne and Cynthia. And just this time that we've had together, we ask through the intercession of St. Therese, St. Joseph, for Our Lady Mount Carmel, St. Teresa, for your blessing upon them, and you pour out your Holy Spirit to sister up a greater desire for you and to know your desire for them, to be with them, to love them, to fill them with your peace, your Holy Spirit of grace. I ask you, Lord, uh, through the intercession of St. Joseph and all of our Carmelite saints, Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Dios te salve, Maria. Bien eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo, bendita eres entre todas las mujeres, y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros, pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. En el nombre de, de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Thank you. Sí. Beautiful. Sí, Thank you. Español. Sí, sí. Adios. Adios. Is this to your family? Sure. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, I forgot to say it with three of us.